the siege of Massilia, including two naval engagements, was an episode of Caesar's civil war, fought in 49 BC between forces loyal to the Optimates and a detachment of Caesar's army. The siege was conducted by Gaius Trebonius, one of Caesar's senior legates, while the naval operations were in the capable hands of Decimus Brutus, Caesar's naval expert. Lucius Domitius Ahenobarbus had become proconsul of Gaul and was sent to gain control of Massilia in order to oppose Caesar. As Caesar marched to Hispania, the Massiliates closed their gates to him, having allied with Ahenobarbus and the Optimates. Roused by their hostile actions, he commenced a siege against Massilia, leaving the newly raised 17, 18, and 19 legions to conduct the siege under the command of Gaius Trebonius. He also placed Decimus Brutus in charge of his fleet there. Caesar himself marched with his veteran legions to Hispania to fight the Pompeian generals Lucius Afranius and Marcus Petraeus. He would return to the siege of Massilia after defeating his opponents at the Battle of Ilida. After the siege had begun, Ahenobarbus arrived in Massilia to defend it against the Caesarian forces. In late June, Caesar's ships, although they were less skillfully built than those of the Massiliates and outnumbered, were victorious in the ensuing naval battle. Gaius Trebonius conducted the siege using a variety of siege machines including siege towers, a siege ramp, and a testudo ram. Gaius Scribonius Curio, careless in adequately guarding the Sicilian straits, allowed Lucius Nasidius to bring more ships to the aid of Ahenobarbus. He fought a second naval battle with Decimus Brutus in early September, but withdrew defeated and sailed for Hispania. Trebonius built a stationary tower, thirty feet square and six stories in height, under the very walls of the city and in the face of a rain of missiles from its engines. The walls of the tower were of brickwork five feet thick. When the lowest story was built it was covered with a solid fireproof roof which was not secured to the walls but rested upon them like a lid. The eaves projected considerably, and from them screens were hung on all sides, covering all the walls. By means of screws the whole canopy, roof, and screens was now raised to the height of one story and the workmen proceeded to build the walls of that story under its protection. This process was repeated in the same manner until the full height of the tower was attained. The Massiliates valiantly defended against the siege machines and works. They threw down burning pitch and pine shavings and the Caesareans undermined the foundations of their city walls. At one point they seemed likely to surrender and declare a truce, but at night they cunningly destroyed the siege works in a gross violation of the treaty, according to Caesar's own account. The city's inhabitants were then near surrender. At the final surrender of Massilia, Caesar showed his usual leniency and Lucius Ahenobarbus fled to Thessaly in the only vessel that was able to escape from the Populares. Afterwards, Massilia was allowed to keep nominal autonomy, due to ancient ties of friendship and support of Rome, along with some territories while most of its empire, was confiscated by Julius Caesar. Chapter 1, In Fiction In Colleen McCulloch's novel Caesar the Siege is described in some detail. In Stephen Saylor's novel Last Scene in Massilia the Siege is the setting for the story.